Call me a terrorist and threaten my pay? Enjoy your nuked careers, ye heathens. I used to work in hospitality in a metro known for its obscenely huge tourist population, you know, the city built around the mouse. I was a manager for the recreational division of the hotel. So, one day, my boss, who we'll call Mary for the purpose of the story, comes into the shared manager's office and starts rummaging around for something, and strikes up a small conversation about work-related minutiae with me. It's important to note she is actually two tiers above me but was acting as head of the department while searching to replace my previous boss who recently quit, great guy by the way, huge loss to the company. As we are talking, she abruptly stops and says by the way, you need to shave your beard, you look like a terrorist and I don't employ terrorists. Ha ha, funny joke between colleagues, right? Nope. I am half Indian and I do look Middle Eastern, and have been taking this kind of shit since middle school. Plus, we're not close, at all. So, I reply as calmly as I can muster, hey, I get you're trying to be funny, but on my end, it comes off as pretty ignorant, so I'd appreciate it if you chilled out with the terrorist stuff to which Mary retorts. Oh, I'm ignorant? We'll see how ignorant I am during your annual review. And proceeds to walk out of the room in a huff, my jaw dropped so low I could taste the floor. You would think it was an easy fix, right? Go to HR and all. She's made rude comments like this before. I've refrained from contacting HR because I didn't want to be petty, but now she threatened my pay, and that's no bueno. So, I go to HR like a good boy and tell the HR director, who we'll call Boyd. I explicitly ask him not to mention it to anyone, just to log it away in case someone else reports something similar and he can establish a pattern of behavior. Well, Boyd decided that he simply must talk to Mary about it. I stress again that I am not comfortable with it, since she strikes me as the vindictive type. No good. He promises there will be no retaliation and tells me he'll contact me later for a statement, which I thought was weird, why not make a statement now? And that was that. About a week goes by and I follow up with Boyd because I've been getting some less than pleasant vibes from Mary. Nothing substantial. But odd. When I ask what happened, he tells me well it appears that Mary was just joking, but she has agreed to never say anything like that again. Your annual review is not in jeopardy. Okay. At that point, I decide to just let it go. Fast forward a month. A new director for our department is hired and surprise, surprise, it's her roommate and former front desk supervisor, Joe. Okay, cool. I'm used to the nepotism because the entire hotel basically operates that way, whatever. Never had an issue with him, didn't know him too well but I'm happy our little hive as a leader again. Man, how ducking naive I was. From the get go he is unpleasant snide comments left and right, changing my schedule at the last minute every week or scheduling me on my established days off, giving away opportunities to my peers that I'm never considered for, making me take improvement classes none of my peers have to take. All strange but up to that point nothing earth shattering, until one day I get written up out of the blue, first ever write up BTW, for refusing to inform a superior of leaving the premises, Referring to me leaving the day prior without literally saying the words hey Joe, I'm leaving for the day. 1. This is not an established policy written or otherwise. When I say I'm leaving, it's a courtesy. 2. I know for a fact my peers don't always say when they leave, personal observation, and was corroborated by them after asking around. 3. Knowing that my peers aren't held to the same bogus standard and having never been written up for it, I know this is a direct shot at me. My review is ducked. Best part? Joe let it slip that Mary asked for me after I left and when it was found that I was indeed gone, she requested the write-up. That was duck up number two, lady. Number three came when Boyd decided to cover his own ass when I approached him with all the evidence pointing to retaliation and discrimination in the workplace. I learned he never properly documented his discussion with me or Mary, and that he's been basically playing the whole ducking thing by ear. I decided to write my long past due statement then and there, turn it in, and email a picture copy to the corporate office. I tell Boyd that I am sorely disappointed about how he handled the issue, and he responds by accusing me of dramatizing the whole ordeal. He was very flippant about the whole thing, rolling his eyes and everything. 
K, buddy. I see you now. So finally, we've reached the revenge after some time, I scrounge up all the evidence I can. My write-up, my co-workers write-up records, with their permission, company policy manuals, my schedules for the past month, including the bogus classes only I was made to attend, my co-workers schedules, witness statements, from peers when Mary has said other demeaning things, and a few others items. Next step, I tell off Joe, because duck him. I make sure he is very angry when I leave. You'll see why later. After crossing my T's and dotting my I's, I resigned with a two-week notice. That night, I type up a letter to the EEOC and attach all my evidence. I mention Mary, Boyd, and Joe by first and last name. I hint that I am pondering a lawsuit. A few weeks later, I have my girlfriend call my old job pretending to be a potential employer asking for a reference. I give her the extension to Joe's desk. As I predicted, he slanders the ever-loving shit out of me, straight up lies, even got my resignation date wrong along with my attendance record, all verifiable, helping my case. I try the same trick with Boyd. But he was smart enough point my girlfriend in the direction of a third-party reference dialer the company is supposed to use for these kinds of calls. I proceed to send my old employer, corporate included, a cease and desist letter with a transcript of the call, hinting I may sue for slander. The result? Some time passes, and the other day I'm at the bank with my girlfriend, I get a call from an old co-worker. I miss the call. But I re-sign to call him back later. Less than an hour later I get five to six calls and texts informing me that Mary, Joe, and Boyd were all fired the same day and walked out of the building. Mary cried. Apparently, the corporate office was contacted by the EEOC and launched their own internal investigation, matching their records with my evidence. The EEOC sent me a return letter with the company's statement, which was fallacious as duck, due to their interviews with the three stooges. But nonetheless I suppose they decided it was easier to nip it in the bud and sack their asses to be safe. Karma may be a witch. But in this case, she had nothing to duck and do with it. Edit, sorry I wasn't clear, I didn't work for Disney. My city is just basically built around Disney. Sorry about the confusion. TLDR. Bossa makes racist joke and threatens my annual pay raise. Two other stooges get themselves involved, and a few months later I get all three of their asses fired the same day. Now to the comments. Well done, documenting the bejesus out of everything and dropping the hammer definitely paid off. I'm sort of sad that in the end you didn't benefit much from it, as you were out a job. But there's nothing more satisfying than doing the walk away with a smug look on your face when the explosion happens behind you thing. Outstanding. And a quick reminder for everyone. HR does not work for you. They are not your advocate, regardless of what they might say. Their objective is to look out for the interests of the company. Documenting everything like OP did is critical for an outcome in your favor. That was a great pro revenge. Did they offer your position back, or how did that work out? They ruined their own careers, and with the topic of terrorism a title of enjoy your suicide bombed careers might have been better. By the way, you need to shave your beard, you look like a terrorist and I don't employ terrorists. Funny how middle managers, and executive management, for that matter, develop inflated egos. Dude, if you're not a sole proprietorship literally running the company, you're a cog in the corporate machine as well. You're not employing shit. I can kinda see it if they literally extended the job offer to you for the position, but it doesn't sound like that happened here. I have long hair. I was told I needed to cut it short because safety. Well, do the women have to shave their heads, too? Well, no of course not they are. Blue. M. He settled on we like our employees to look nice and professional. Then I got a tour of my workplace, minimum wages slaving away in stained, threadbare shirts, holy boots, and jeans that were more patches than denim. Tuck that guy. Anyway, I got the job and kept the hair intact. 